Hi, this is Todd, and uh, today is Wednesday, April 21st, 2010. Today we're going to talk about uh, three separate techniques, uh, their advantages and disadvantages for raising post-diapause checker spot larvae. Now, when I talk about post-diapause checker spot larvae, what I mean by that, the life history of uh, most checker spots uh, is that um, the female's legs and clutches and the pre-diapause larvae feed gregariously, usually in a web, uh, for the genera Polydryas, Euphydrius, Thessalia, and Clocyne. Uh, the larvae that you see here are Polydryas arachne, the arachne checker spot. And so the first technique we're going to talk about is um, usually if you just find one or two caterpillars of a post-diapause checker spot, um, and I've talked about this before, this is the twin cut method. Um, here I've got uh, a sprig of penstemon, and I'm simply going to place um, this sprig of penstemon in the if I can get that to, to show you. I just basically uh, place that in a cup and it's got a hole in it and then I'm going to go ahead and um, fish that uh, sprig through uh, so that the caterpillars so that the sprig is exposed to water but the caterpillars are not and then I'll just place these two larvae uh, in the plant in the container and then I've got a small lid here. I've got some screen that I place on top of it and secure the lid. I've talked about the uh, closed container method before. It's uh, probably preferable if you only have a few caterpillars. Um, another option is what I call the potted plant technique. Down here we have several uh, last instars, six instars of Euphydrius Anisia Wicoyute from the San Rafael Swell region of Utah. And um, with these six larvae I'm going to set them up in another technique uh, called the potted plant method. Um, this is uh, bearded tongue penstemon palmeri that I purchased from a nursery. Um, what you do is simply uh, you take the larvae and you place them on the potted plant and then let them crawl up the stalks and feed on the leaves and the flowers. What's nice about this method is you don't have to change out plant regularly. Uh, with the twin cut method you have to change out the plant every two or three days. Now in the event that you can't get penstemon, a lot of nurseries do sell it in the spring, um, another option is what we call the open bucket technique. The open bucket technique basically is you take a bouquet, uh, this is uh, Indian paintbrush, Castilea cremosa, um, and put it in a bottle of water and then I take that and put that in a bucket as such. And then a technique that Ken Hansen devised is because checker spots like to crawl off the plant, you know with the twin cut method if they crawl off the plant it's easy for them to crawl back on and with the uh, potted plant method, oftentimes they'll rust on the screen, but they can still find the potted penstemon. But with this technique, you want to help them be able to find the plant. So what Ken has devised, and I think it's a great idea, is to place, um, take pa uh, paper towels and scrunch them up a bit and place those on the bottom of your bucket surrounding your bottle of water. I put those together. By doing that, when the caterpillars crawl off the host plant, they'll find the paper towel and it'll make it a lot easier for the caterpillars to find the plant again. Another good function of the paper towels is when the caterpillar is done and ready to form a pre-pupa and then later pupate, they can pupate right on the paper towel. Last step, of course, is to place a lid on top of the six gallon or five gallon bucket. The lid has um, it's been cut out with some butterfly knitting material so that the uh, uh, the frass will dry up and then the caterpillars won't get sick. So anyway, that's just wanted to talk about three separate methods of uh, raising post-diapause checker spot larvae. And uh, thanks.